All right, let's go to Darwin. Our mate uh, Matt Cunningham is standing by there. Always great to get him on the telly. Hello, great man. Lovely to see you. How's Darwin tonight? Oh, beautiful, mate. Actually, a bit controversial tonight. The former Aboriginal Affairs Minister's just quit the Parliament. From, we're going to have a by-election early next year, which will spell trouble for the Chief Minister, Michael Gunner. So it's all been happening up here tonight. Yeah, so let's talk about that, because, um, I mean, they've got a pretty healthy majority, but I know there's sort of been some slipping and sliding since. That said, you're on your way to a territory election next year, and the joints broke. Yeah, well, we found out it's even more broke than we expected this week. The MIEFO was handed down. We're heading to, for a net debt of $8.3 billion by 2022-23 over the Ford est estimates. That's blown out by another $300 million this week. To put that into perspective, the net uh, debt to revenue uh, is now 100, will be 120% by 2022-23, which is uh, just an extraordinary number. So, you know, the finances are a disaster. Now, this bloke who was uh, who quit tonight, he actually uh, tried to raise this as an issue about 12 months ago, sent an email to all of his caucus colleagues and said, you know, our finances are in a real mess. We need to rein in the public service. We need to rein in the spending. That email was leaked. He, he and two colleagues were then kicked out of the Labor caucus, and tonight uh, his name's Ken Vowles. He's pulled the pin on Parliament altogether, so uh, there'll be a by-election early next year, which uh, might be bad news for uh, Michael Gunner uh, heading into the election uh, later that year in August. All right, let's also talk about... Uh, the, it feels like there is a real um, momentum at the moment for lots of native title claims, uh, and I think all of this can be linked back to that decision that we've talked about and basically nobody else noticed uh, in the High Court that basically came out and was pretty clear that basically, you know, sort of a one square kilometre equals one and a half million dollars in compensation. So there's another native title claim and this could result in about seven hundred million dollars compo. What's the deal? Well, the Gumach clan uh, in northeast East Arnhem Land lodged this claim in the federal court today. Now, obviously, uh, we're talking about a far bigger parcel of land here. Uh, and we're talking also about the fact that it was uh, used uh, to develop bauxite mining. So uh, in the Timber Creek case, uh, it was only 1.3 square kilometres of land. Uh, the traditional owners there in that uh, high court, that landmark high court ruling uh, earlier this year uh, were awarded $2.5 million in compensation. The high court upheld an earlier federal court decision. What's interesting about that case, though, is that 50%, or roughly 50% of that compensation was awarded for the spiritual harm that was caused, what the federal court judges described as the gut-wrenching pain that the traditional owners felt when uh, they saw their sacred sites destroyed uh, as infrastructure was built there. So uh, this case that was launched uh, today by the Gumach clan and Gullaroy Unipingu is slightly different in a, that it predates the Aboriginal Land Rights Act. Oh. So they're going to make a, a case that uh, Section 51, uh, Paragraph 31 of the Constitution, on just terms, that... Uh, phrase that's famous from the movie The Castle uh, was actually breached uh, when the government allowed the mining company in there in 1969. But the reason that they're able to seek so much compensation uh, is partly due to that High Court ruling, that Timber Creek case we talked about, that brings into play not just the physical harm that was done to their land, but also the spiritual or the cultural harm that they felt when they saw some of their sacred sites destroyed. All right, so what is the expectation about where this goes? Is this something that is in its early stages or can be sorted out pretty quickly? No, this is going to take a long time to sort out, I would suspect. Uh, the people I've spoken to expect it uh, to go all the way to the High Court and say that it could, this case could run for up to five years. And we've seen uh, similar cases run for, for a similar amount of time. What the, the first key bit of evidence will be uh, evidence that will be given by Gullaroy Unipingu uh, himself. Now, he flagged this case at the Gama Festival earlier this year. Uh, and uh, you, you talk about that sort of gut-wrenching pain, uh, that spiritual loss that uh, makes up a huge part of these claims. Well, he basically detailed that in a speech at the Gama Festival. Now, he's expected next year to give evidence in the federal court uh, and outline uh, how he felt when he saw those sites being destroyed. That's important because there are a couple of things at play. Uh, one is you, you need to establish uh, a continuous cultural connection to the land to be able to claim that. Now, I think the Gumach in North East Arnhem 
Newfoundland would be able to claim that pretty well. Uh, and also, you need to have someone uh, who was there and who can say that they felt that. That happened in the, the Timber Creek case. There was a traditional owner who gave that evidence not long before he died. So in this case, uh, you know, the Gormach would be pretty keen for Gullaroy Unipingu to give that evidence, uh, given that uh, he's a man who's now into his 70s. All right, good man. We'll keep talking. We'll keep uh, an eye on things. And obviously, uh, you're also across so much. A lot of news out of Darwin. It's why we love having you here. Uh, I reckon you're the best on ground when it comes to reporting and uh, certainly so in Darwin and everywhere else around the country as well, mate. I'll see you soon. Good man. Thanks, mate. He's a good bloke, isn't he? Matt Cunningham there. In